And then, Snoozer is exploring the ocean. Which ocean is Snoozer exploring? What? There are four oceans on planet Earth. The Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. Oh, Arctic Ocean. Sounds exotic. However, a fifth ocean is now recognized as the Southern Ocean in an Antarctic region. Sad, you are confusing my mind. Proceed with your juvenile game. Snoozer is exploring the Pacific Ocean. Inaccurate. It is pronounced Pacific Ocean. P A C I F I C. Ugh, that. You are not very fun to play with. I am incapable of having fun. My programming prevents me from experiencing joy in any way. Apparently, me too. Ugh, where are you, checkers? is exploring the Arctic Ocean, and it is very cold. Snoozer swims two million feet deep. Inaccurate. The ocean only reaches depths of 36,200 feet at its deepest point. Oh, well I never learned that. Inaccurate. You learned that during a previous reading road trip. Oh yeah. What's going on here? Zat and I are playing a game! A game about what? Oceans! Specifically, the Pacific Ocean! This robot has a remarkable lack of knowledge regarding oceans, rivaling that of a small child. Is this true, Snoozer? Yes! You simply cannot stand Snoozer. Something must be done about this. What must we do? We must go on a reading road trip. Check, check. Recording. No! Oh, I almost forgot! Recording! 
All right, Snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where were you this morning? Me? I was off exploring winter woods. I was looking for one of those fuzz crystals. Oh, those shiny guys! Did you find one? Of course I did. I found myself a red one. There it is. Oh, snoozer, this fuzz crystal will power the checkers in flight for another six weeks. Oh, goody! I do not want to go back to driving on the road. How boring! Anyway, where are we going? Oh, right. Well, Snoozer, I'm afraid that is strictly confidential. But I will give you three hints. Goody gumdrops. Time to put on my focus face. Is it on? Hmm? Your focus face, is it on? Yes, but you know what? What? My focus face is invisible. Yes, of course. Hint number one. We are meeting a person. Hint number two. This person works in various different places. And hint number three. They know a lot about oceans. Oh dear me. Where would I go to learn about oceans? Is there like a school, but instead of learning math and stuff, you just learn about oceans? Okay class, today we're learning about oceans. Hello teacher, I have a question. We already learned about oceans yesterday. That's all we do here, Snoozer. Oceans, day in and day out until the end of time. No! Certainly not like that. No, Snoozer. No, no, no. I'm talking about an oceanographer. An ocean aquifer? Oceanographer. Oceanographer. Yes. Wait, what is an oceanographer? Zot. An oceanographer is one who studies the ocean. Oceanography covers a wide range of topics, including marine life, ecosystems, ocean circulation, plate tectonics, and the geology of the seafloor, and the chemical and physical properties of the ocean. Oh! So an oceanographer reads books about the ocean? Yeah, well, they also might explore the ocean. You know, an oceanographer devotes much of their lives to learning all about the ocean. Checkers, do you think I could be an oceanographer? Oh, if that's what you really want to do, Snoozer, then I can't see why not. But keep in mind, being an oceanographer requires a great deal of time and energy. But I will say, the best way to decide if you want to do something is to learn more about it. Let me pull up the map. We are headed to the state of Maine, where we're going to go into the ocean and learn about oceanography. Along the way, we're going to stop at Mrs. Hamilton's treehouse and do a craft with her. What a day! I cannot wait! Hey, snoozer, look! Here come the books. Let's check out a few. Here you go, Snoozer. Life in the Ocean, the story of oceanographer Sylvia Earle by Claire A. Nivola. And Ocean, a visual encyclopedia by John Woodward. Excellent. Those are two fantastic books, Snoozer. Well, I think we're about ready to take a closer look. What do you say? Entering in three, two, one. gives a nice introduction to the ocean. Right away, we see a wonderful map of the oceans of the globe. Oh yeah! There they are! And then we dive deeper into each of them. The Arctic, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian, and the Southern. 
It's full of nuggets of information of really interesting things. Oh my gosh! It's like we're inside a museum! Totally. There is information at every corner. Literally. And the book also gives us an idea of life under the sea. All of the creatures and plants found inside the ocean. It's a terrific resource and full of pictures to guide us as we read. I love these pictures, but there are so many words. I don't know that I can read them all at once. Yeah, you'd probably want an adult to read these books to you. You can still look at the pictures and maps, and as you get older and become a better reader, you can read it yourself. Okay, let's go into the other book now. Life in the Ocean the story of oceanographer Sylvia Earle. So her first book was about oceans in general. This story is about an individual who became an oceanographer and her story. Right off the bat, we learned that Sylvia spent more than 7,000 hours underwater. Oh my goodness gracious, that's a lot of time. Sure is. We learn about Sylvia from her early life on the farm to her fascination with nature, moving to Florida and near an ocean, and all the trials and tribulations that led Sylvia to pursue a career in oceanography. We see specific experiences that taught Sylvia about the ocean, and she learned some truly extraordinary things. So many words. And quite a story. Sylvia even heard whales singing while she was underwater on one of her missions. Well, I can't wait to see what else Sylvia learned. Absolutely. Later. Wowie wahoo! I like being an illustration. You know what, Checkers? What? I want to make something now. Like a craft. Maybe we can go to Mrs. Hamilton's class. It's not a bad idea, Snoozer. Let's go. Girls, would you like to do the Mrs. Hamilton craft just like me? Guess what? You can! Head to your local library for all the materials that we use in the craft. Plus, we have activity sheets, games, and a whole lot more. Your library might even have their very own schnoozer. Come and see me! Anyway, back to the show. See ya. Ah! Ah! Oh! Whoa! Snoozer! You came in like a big splash, just like the ocean. I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. Well, today we are going to be making an ocean scene. So we are going to be needing these two sheets of paper. And the first thing we have to do is cut out all the pieces. All right, so let's start with that. All right. Oh, my. That was a lot of things. Looks like a lot of things we're going to find in the ocean. All right, looks like more than we're even going to be able to fit on the page. So we're going to have to do this in steps. Ah, I don't see my rocks. I lost my rocks. Oh, here they are. Ah, okay. All right, so I'm going to try and get everything together. What do you think, snoozer? What do you think I should put on first? I'm thinking something in the back of the picture. All right, so this is a little tricky, so I'm gonna get a scrap piece of paper because I don't want any of the pieces sticking up. Well, I got mine all on there after all. All right, well, the last thing we need to do is add some faces. So a black marker should work. You can make your faces any way you like. You could do two eyes or just one eye. 
depends on what angle your sea creature is coming from. I think I'll do an eye here so it looks just like a goldfish cracker. Well, there! We have a little picture of the ocean. What do you think, Snoozer? I like it. Mrs. Hamilton, yes. is the blue guy a shark or a whale? Hmm. I would have to say he is a shark. Okay. I named the shark Checkers because it is blue. And I named my fish Snoozer because it is red. And, and, oh dear, the starfish is yellow. Hmm. I will name the starfish Snoozer also. Aha. Well, I had a great time working with you today, Snoozer. So I'll see you next time, okay? Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. And then I added the colors. And then the glitter. And checkers, Mrs. Hamilton said I did a really good job. I think she's probably right, Snoozer. Checkers, when are we getting to the rainbow? Right now. <sighs> All right, Snoozer. Going through. The rainbow. All right, looks like we've arrived. Yippee! It's time for me to fulfill my destiny. What? To fulfill one's destiny means to bring about the completion or achievement of a desire, promise, etc. To carry out or execute a request or a command, etc. Thank you, Zot. Checkers doesn't know everything. Zot the robot at your service. These are today's book selections. Flotsam by David Wiesner. Mr. Seahorse by Eric Carl. Swashby and the Sea by Beth Ferry. The Only Fish in the Sea. Philip Steve. Lotion. A Visual Encyclopedia by John Woodward. Life in the Ocean by Claire A. Nevola. That is all for now. Goodbye. Is this the ocean? Yes, Snoozer, we're in the ocean. And I know we're going to talk to an oceanographer today, but I thought what we would do is have a video call with an oceanographer while we were on a boat in the ocean. How does that sound? I know, it is Snoozer, and I hope we can learn a little bit more about it. Let's bring her on right now. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, I am Snoozer. I have some questions. Can you tell us about oceanography? Today I learned that there are four parts of oceanography. Is that true? It's, it's broadly four branches of oceanography. There are, you know, but the thing is oceanography, I would say, is an extremely interdisciplinary field. Uh, there are, of course, four main branches of oceanography, um, physical, chemical, biological, and geological oceanography, but that does not limit what oceanography really is. For example, um, satellite oceanography is a very, very useful and important part of oceanography, and that's something that comes into application, not just in physical, but it also comes into application for chemical, biological, and geological oceanography. So. It's it's really you know there are a lot of lot of fields that sort of overlap into the ocean. Do you have to live near an ocean to be an oceanographer? 
Um, of course, some oceanographers do have to live near the ocean, especially people that observe the ocean, that take measurements and samples of the ocean. But modern tools like computers, uh, internet, allow oceanographers to access ocean data from basically anywhere on Earth. And so as long as you have that, you could study oceanography from basically anywhere. Oh my goodness, that's so fascinating. As we're sitting here, Snoozer's been talking about how big the ocean is. By the way, have you ever been inside of the ocean? Yeah, I have been on research cruises where I was in the ocean for about uh, two months. And so, you know, you basically go in a very large research vessel. Um, and during the day, you have to like collect data. You know, we have to put in CTDs which we drop all the way to the ocean bottom and then we pick it back up. We measure the temperature of the CTD as it goes down the water column in the ocean and then measure it again as it comes back up. Collect water samples, uh, we collect sediment samples, we measure the gases that are dissolved in the ocean water at different depths and what kind of gases there are and what is the concentration. And so we do all kinds of work like that when we are on research cruises measuring the different uh, things that people are interested in looking at, uh, depending on where you go to, the instruments you use will change. What do you like most about the ocean? For me, the oceans have always been fascinating, just because of their vastness. Um, it's so, like, you know, it's so majestic. Why is it important to study the ocean? why we study the ocean and why is it important so the oceans cover about 70 percent of the entire planet um, the oceans also cover 97 percent of the entire water in our planet and so if you want to take care of the planet it's impossible to do that without really taking care of the ocean um, and the other important reason to really, you know, why for us as humans, why do we have to care about the ocean is because we get food from the ocean. We use the ocean for resources, transport, you know, and lastly, the oceans influence the atmospheric weather, which basically controls our day to day climate. And so if you want all of that to uh, make sense or to be you know, to be under control, or if you want your food source to last forever, you really need to do that by studying the ocean and to take care of the ocean. And that's why it's really important. All right. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. We learned so much about oceans. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Bye. All right, Snoozer, what did you think of that? That was exciting. I know, it's so exciting learning about oceans. But what do you say we go for an ocean boat ride now? Let's go! Whee! Well, Snoozer... You still want to be an oceanographer? Um, no. Oh yeah? Why? Well, I really love the ocean, but I don't have time to be an oceanographer and all of the other stuff I still have planned. Fair enough, Snoozer. But you can still learn about the ocean. It can be a hobby. Hobbies when you do something, you enjoy it, but it's all for fun. All right, well, that about does it. We've got our file now. We're going to send it off to the Fuzzleland School so they too can learn all about oceans. Until next time.